I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. As we're thinking about coronavirus and shutting down large portions of society, I thought for a moment, who is essential? Who is considered essential and has to stay on the job? And one thing I thought of was farmers. I, and I thought, thank you farmers for still working, hopefully. And they're gonna supply us with the foods because we need supermarkets open. And then I thought about all the moving parts of making that happen. Stocking food on the shelves so we can, as consumers, go get them and eat. So we need trucks to bring food from the farmers to distribution centers. So that requires a truck driver. Now that person is essential. What if the truck breaks down? We need a service person and or a mechanic to go out there and service the truck. They're essential. That truck gets to a distribution center, has to be staffed with people. Now they are essential. But the truck also needs diesel. And that means oil refineries have to keep on cranking out diesel and gasoline. So those people are essential. And then another truck has to take diesel and gasoline from the refineries to the gas stations. So the trucker can put diesel in his truck. Well, that also means that the people at the uh, service station are essential. So uh, then, then you look at those moving parts. Then another truck has to take food from the distribution center to the supermarket, another truck, another possible service, uh, another possible mechanic. Then we get to the grocery store, staffed by lots of people. Thank you very much for, for being there for us. And then the checkout people and the managers open the store and the janitors and stocking the shelves. And that's all, uh, that's all essential people too. This is growing pretty quickly, right? We as consumers have to get to that grocery store, oftentimes by car. So we need to go fill up our gas tanks with gas. So again, gas station attendants are essential. And we go there, pick up the food and, and off we go. Well, then I thought, we also want trash pickup during this time. We don't want trash building up on, on our roads. We've seen what happens uh, in that scenario in, in large municipalities especially. So now uh, trash collectors are essential and the people that staff the landfills are also essential. Of course, the entirety of the healthcare system is essential and thank you to the doctors and nurses and attendants and janitors and everyone else on the front line. Thank you very much from the bottom of all of our hearts for being there for us. But all of those moving parts, those people are, are essential. Transportation to get people to and from there. And maybe they're going to be um, also sequestered. So they, they need extra lodging. And then we need construction people, apparently, as we're trying to do this. And then additional janitors, if we're converting over dorm rooms and so forth, they're all essential. I, myself, as a chiropractor, we're now considered essential. The Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards has just come out and said we are essential. If people are coming to us for more serious musculoskeletal situations that these people without our service might end up in an urgent care or emergency room, that taxes that system where they're trying to divert their energies and forces to handling the coronavirus sick people. So now we're considered essential and then our wonderful staff people and so forth are considered essential to help ease the burden on emergency departments and urgent care facilities and those doctors and nurses. So you can see it just kind of spins around. We are so dependent on one another. And then we have to ask ourselves, is it worthy of shutting down the entirety of society with the potential of being very difficult to rebuild it, to restart it because of all these moving parts? And I was just starting, I was just touching the, the surface of how we are so interdependent on each other. We need to think about this for the next virus outbreak. We're hearing words that the coronavirus might circulate around and be again here next year. What are we gonna do next year? We might think about this of course, it makes sense to keep people that are vulnerable and the elderly very much sequestered with lots of techniques and tools to make sure that they don't have exposure to other people from the outside. So nursing homes and chronically ill, keeping them very carefully monitored. But the entirety of society, I'm not so sure with all these moving parts. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.